In terms of Holocaust denial, well, we have really two forms of Holocaust denial. I know you're well aware of this. What I call the hardcore Holocaust denial and softcore Holocaust denial. And in English, I don't know if there's a parallel term in Polish, hardcore and softcore are usually used for pornography. But uh, and I, I chose those terms specifically because I think denying the Holocaust is the equivalent of pornographic history. But what what the hardcore deniers, like the David Irvings or the David Duke, whose tweet we showed earlier, would say is that it never happened. You know, that there were no gas chambers, it's an impossibility, of course, all uh, ridiculous stuff and the, the thousands of, of witnesses and documents all come to answer that. But let's say they convince some, the hardcore denier who did so. Uh, the person who didn't know, let's say they were tabla rasa about the Holocaust and, and they heard this, they said, oh, well, they made it up. The natural question they would ask is why? What's in it for the Jew to make up such a terrible story? What, what benefit do they get? And the answer the denier, the hardcore denier would give is, what did the Jew get out of the Holocaust? And the two answers that are usually given, one is Israel, which is a much more complicated answer because they would have been a political entity in Israel without the Holocaust and lots of things like that. But that's the general perception. And the second thing is reparations, which is a fancy word for money. So you've given a rationale for something that sounds completely stupid and absurd, Holocaust denial, but suddenly you've made it logical. Oh, well, the Jews always care about money. Oh, well, the Jews are always willing to uh, screw another people, hurt another people for their own benefit. And then the person who's this been convinced by the denier might say, but how were they able to plant all these documents? How were they able to get the allies to hold war crimes trial in Nuremberg, you know? Um, and the denier answers, well, they're powerful. They were able to do that. Well, how were they able to get the Germans to say we did it if it never happened? Oh, they told the Germans, if you want to be re Reinvited back to the family of nations, you've got to admit to these things because the Jews are that powerful. Now, the kind that's one kind of Holocaust, and I was an answer that fits these anti-Semitic structure that we've been setting out for this conversation. The kind of denial you're talking about is not really softcore denial; it's distortion. Uh, we were victims to no, but look. Uh, there were many polls, again, I'm, I'm not bringing to you anything you don't know, but maybe a non-poll should say it. Um, there were many polls who rescued Jews. I think in Yad Vashem and the Avenue of the Righteous Nations of the World, where there are more uh, Pol Polish citizens mentioned than any other group. Of course, that's where most of the Jews were, but there are, I think, 6,700, maybe 7,000. But there were also polls who collaborated. I uh, who told on Jews, who said there's a Jew hiding here, who, uh, whatever it might be, we know that, we know that from the work of many fine academics, we know that from the documents, um, but what we're seeing is not in Poland, we, and we see it in Hungary, we see it in many places. It's not denial of the facts, but rewriting the facts so that I am not, or the, my ancestors, my, the people who came before me are not complicit. Um, and in some countries, of course, uh, I think less so in Poland, but some of the former Eastern Bloc countries, communist Bloc countries, it's also because your current political leadership are the heirs from, the descendants of, I don't mean you know, uh, family descendants, but ideological descendants, political descendants of the people who were the collaborators with the Germans you know, who are official collaborators. So it gets very much wrapped into contemporary politics and the past. Uh, we see what's going on in Hungary uh, with, uh, with Orban, Viktor Orban, head of the Hungarian government, trying to rewrite the history there, that the Hungarians, Hungary was invaded, you know, in March of 44, and then the Germans did this terrible thing. Well, Eichmann came to Hungary with a couple of hundred SS men, and uh, the 
the third week or so of March. And by the beginning of May, first, second week in May, they start the deportations. And over the course of seven weeks, they deport, uh, what is it, uh, close to half a million Jews, of whom 425,000, the precise number, um, are murdered in Auschwitz. You don't do that with a couple of hundred SS officers. You do that with the assistance of uh, Polish rail, of, of, excuse me, Hungarian railways, which were still in the, unlike in Poland, in, in Hungary, they were still in the control of the, of the Hungarians. You do that with the, with the assistance of Hungarian gendarmes. You do that Hungarian militia, uh, Hungarian politicians. Um, and yet um, that, that history, there's an attempt to, to rewrite its inconvenient history. So if it's inconvenient history, I'm either going to deny it as a David Duke or a David Irving would do, or I'm going to rewrite it as an Orban would do or, or people in other places, including some 